Are we really going to make Bill Burr's Saturday Night Live episode controversial? I really liked it. It was one of the rare episodes where I watched every minute of the show, including the music. That doesn't happen. I thought it was really good. If you missed it, in his monologue, Burr was like SNL edgy. Not comedy club edgy, but like for SNL, it was a little little edgy for TV. I saw my wife kind of making that ooh face when he did a couple of the jokes. One of the jokes was it didn't bother him if some people refused to wear masks during the pandemic. And Bill said, take out your grandparents, take out your weak cousin with the asthma. I don't care. It's your decision. There's too many people. It's a dream come true. If you're that dumb and you want to kill your own family members, by all means, do it. It stops you from reproducing. He cracked a joke about Rick Moranis being attacked in New York, talking about how New York had sort of lost its edge for a little bit, and this was a good thing. It was funny. My wife was like, oh, Rick Moranis. I'm like, it's a joke. It's comedy. It's funny. Bill talked about white women hijacking the woke movement. Burr said, you guys stood by us toxic white males through centuries of our crimes against humanity. You rolled around on the blood money, and occasionally when you wanted to sneak off and hook up with a black dude, if you got caught, you said it wasn't consensual. He also talked about Pride Month, wondering if it was a little long, don't you think, for a group of people that were never enslaved? Black people were actually enslaved. They get February. They get 28 days of overcast weather. The comedians came to Bill Burr's defense. Dan Soder tweeted, The only thing funnier than Burr's SNL monologue is watching all the wet blankets get mad about it. Burr Kreischer said, Bill Burr just murdered on SNL. Congrats, brother. Sam Morrill said, if you're complaining about Burr's stand-up, stand-up might not be your thing. It's like watching basketball and not getting LeBron. Tim Dillon said, we do this every time. No one's mad at Bill Burr. Everyone enjoyed it. Please stop. They're clearly jokes. It's clearly comedy. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I thought the news was a little edgy as well. Colin Joe said, this week was Mental Illness Awareness Week. And trust me, we're aware he had an image of President Trump on the balcony behind him. President and active bioweapon Donald Trump took his doctors hostage and broke out of the hospital like Sarah Connor in Terminator 2. And I guess he must have been in a coma and thought the year was 2016 because he started demanding Hillary's emails and for the feds to arrest Obama. Michael Che chimed in. He said, President Trump claims to have survived the coronavirus. Yay! I'm not going to say I'm disappointed, but it kind of feels like when there's a car crash and the only survivor is the drunk driver. That got an oof from the wife on the couch. Trump said him getting COVID was a blessing from God, and I bet even God was like, hey, we tried, guys. Actually, maybe we should be more optimistic about this. There's two ways we can look at it. Either Trump's telling the truth and we finally have a cure for COVID, or Trump is lying and he's still going to die. I'm not going to say that's a win-win, but it's definitely not a lose-lose. The two hosts started talking talking about how this particular episode was dark and it was a little darker than the usual SNL, but it was a really good episode. Pete Davidson dropped by weekend update and he said, I'm never getting another tattoo for the rest of my life. Don't get tattoos. I got a Harry Potter tattoo years ago because I'm not psychic. I didn't know JK Rowling was going to go all Mel Gibson on us. I have a Game of Thrones tattoo. Now I'm terrified one day George R.R. Martin just going to be like, hey, if you enjoy what I had to say about dragons and direwolves, wait till you hear what I think about Puerto Ricans. That's a funny joke. So like I said, I thought the episode was really good. The uh, opening stuff with the debate, the debate part was fine. When they brought in Jim Carrey and the whole fly thing, I didn't feel like that worked. Jim Carrey's Joe Biden, I don't know if this is going to work or not. And, uh, you know, if the polling results are correct, are we going to have four years of Jim Carrey doing this impression? I'm not sure I'm excited about that. Some sketches you should look up, and I retweeted them from the uh, Daily Comedy News at DCN Pod Twitter account. Check out the Mafia sketch and the Sam Adams commercial. I thought those were both really good. So Saturday night, I played some FIFA 21, and then I came upstairs, and I'm like, hey, you host this Daily Comedy News podcast. You should get familiar with what happened at Just for Laughs. So I sat down, and I watched Conversations with Funny People featuring Sarah Cooper, moderated by Tig Notaro. This... You can watch it. I posted it on the Facebook page slash Daily Comedy News. Uh, Hopefully the link is still live. They might have taken that down after the weekend. Anyway, this just seemed to be Tig Notaro talking over Sarah Cooper. You know Sarah. She makes TikTok videos. You know Sarah. I I don't get it. I mean, if I haven't made that clear to you already, I don't get it. And then I watch this thing and I'm like, I don't get it. I mean, she's in the room, but it's just Tig Notaro talking over her. Like, I don't get it. There were a bunch of panel discussions up on the website. I love Just for Laughs and there's a pandemic, but like, I just didn't care. I just was skimming them. I'm like, I just, I'd rather, I want to watch stand up. And if you can't do stand up, show me old stand up. I just, I just didn't care. Sorry. I watched Andy Kindler's State of the Union thing. Um, It was okay. And I'll talk about that in a second because the Interabang recapped it. 
Now, the Interbang is a really good comedy website. I check it out every day to see if there are stories for this podcast. But that's the sort of like super duper way into comedy website, like the people that are like really, 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 really into it. The people that like probably have on their calendar 362 days until Andy Candler gives another speech. Like that's how much they're into it. So they recapped it. They seem to enjoy the sit-down comedy sessions with Howie Mandel, colon, Bob Saget. Mandel sat down with Saget, Miss Pat, and Bobby Lee to explore who they are, how they cope, and why they chose comedy. This show was comedy at another level, because in order to work, Howie and his guests had to be willing to completely bare their souls and have the comedy chops to know how to make the topics they discuss funny. And boy, did they deliver on both fronts. Howie opened the show with his longtime friend Saget, and they discussed the ways they both used comedy to help them get through their darkest days and dove straight into a conversation about their father's deaths. It's not what I'm looking for, man. I just want to hear somebody get up there and, like, do some jokes. Not for me. Andy Kindler, he said, if it wasn't for Trump, Joe Rogan might be the dumbest person to ever have made $100 million. Kindler then called out Adam Carolla for doing comedy in the, quote, lowest possible denominator. And he joked that aside from his personal life, what Chris Delia was doing on stage was a crime. Kindler took shots at the Comedy Store documentary. Uh, those shots aimed at Ari Shafir and Byron Allen. He took issue with Bill Maher's habit of laughing at himself. He made fun of Stephen Colbert's Trump impression and the latest season of Curb Your Enthusiasm for being overrated. He had jokes about Jimmy Kimmel being the co-creator of The Man Show and speculated that The Man Show might have caused more long-term damage than when Jimmy wore blackface. Kinder explained his disdain for Mindy Kaling's tweeting habits and William Shatner's endorsement deals. His address was only 30 minutes long as opposed to the usual hour because we're doing half the amount of time because there was half the amount of show business. Yeah, no. Right, the AP says John Oliver and the town of Danbury, Connecticut, have worked it out. The city council voted 18 to 1 to rename the sewage plant after John Oliver, who began a tongue-in-cheek battle with Danbury when he went on an expletive rant against the city on last week tonight back in August. The mayor said he will be offering tours of the sewer plant for $500 donations to local food pantries. The mayor said, I think it's been a home run. It's been a lot of fun. If I could put food on people's table for Thanksgiving by naming a sewer plant after a very popular comedian, we'll do it all day long. It's the John Oliver Memorial Sewer Plant in Danbury, Connecticut. If you've got $500 to burn, I recommend you just donate $500 to your local food pantry. And Michael Ian Black spoke to Connecticut insiders. We call Connecticut here in the end of the podcast today. Michael said, I've been waiting to host a new show called Werewolf for the CW, but it keeps getting delayed because of COVID. So I've been working on a bunch of smaller projects to keep myself sane, including starting a second season of my podcast, Obscure, in which he reads a classic book out loud and makes comments as he reads it. Last year, I did Jude the Obscure. Currently a classic book. This season I'm reading Frankenstein. It's meant to be fun and funny way to digest the books that you always meant to read, but never quite got around to. I don't think I meant to read Jude the Obscure. Don't know what that one is. That's your comedy news for today. Hey, let me know if you've seen my headphones because I can't find them. I had to record with the earbuds today. And you could subscribe and all that. Thank you for listening. See you tomorrow.